Now the other issue, which is a different issue as long as you mention testing, which I really want to spend a lot of time on because I am, I am very worried that, the, that we've got this fast moving train that everybody calls reform where the pendulum is swung too far in the direction of we're going to have these standardized tests and whether a student passes or not determines whether he or she goes from third grade to fourth grade or eighth grade to ninth grade or graduates. Now, a couple points, Kwame. Number one, I'm for accountability and testing, but that doesn't necessarily have to be standardized tests. Right. There's different ways of testing That's kids right. and there's different ways of knowing how they're doing and we should do that. Uh, but there's questions about standardized tests, a couple of different questions. One is whether it te what, what does it really test? Some kids do what, can take them, some kids can't. Second of all, does it test ability to write, to think, to think conceptually, sense of irony, you name it. Uh, but even more importantly, my, and I'm somebody who never could do well in these tests, and there's mm -hmm. lots of kids with different disabilities that can't. The idea of, of holding a kid back at grade at eight is outrageous. By the way, the evidence is that when you hold these kids back, they, they don't do, there's, no, there's not one bit of evidence that they do better. They do worse. And then usually it's the first step towards dropping out. Mm -hmm. Okay. But here's the biggest issue of all. By and large, we already know who the kids are. You, can, you don't even, even need to waste the time with the tests. Figure out the income of the family the educational attainment of the parents, and you pretty much can predict how the kids are going to do. So you don't do anything to change the concerns and circumstances of kids' lives, many of whom come from families from English as a second language, come from families with a lot of poverty, come from parents who aren't necessarily literate, right? You don't do anything to make sure that every child comes to kindergarten not behind, but ready to learn. You do nothing about that. You do nothing about making sure that you give these kids the support they need to do well, to guarantee that each child has the same opportunity opportunity to do well. You do nothing about that and then you give them tests and fail them. Yeah. To me it's cowardly because you're going after the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm for testing and I'm for accountability but I am not for uh, the emphasis that I now see on standardized testing uh, as, 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 a, as a reform. I don't think it is. Right. Not, not, not done alone nor should it be the only way we measure kids. And if we don't do what we should be doing as a state mm -hmm. or a country or a city to make sure that our children all have the same chance to achieve and do well, then I think it's, I think it's cowardly to then just fail kids that we've already failed. Right, and, and, and we know them, as you point out, we know them uh, by their circumstance. We know them when they enter kindergarten. Yes, we right. know who they're going to be. Sure, the single, here, look, we could do. What, so people say, well, Paul, what's the positive? Okay, the positive is this. I think Minnesota, if I had a goal for Minnesota, one goal, uh -huh. one goal more than any other goal, it would be that Minnesota be the first state in the United States of America. And this is Minnesota. We've both been talking about our state. Sure. Where we can say that every child by kindergarten, she knows colors and shapes and sizes. He knows how to spell his name. Uh, she knows the alphabet and they've all been read too widely and each, every single one of them doesn't come to kindergarten behind but they all come to kindergarten ready to learn. We can do that. Sure. We can do it by making much more of a commitment to pre-K education. We can do it by more tutors and mentors. We can do it private sector, public sector. We can do it. Second of all, I would say that Minnesota, we ought to have the best teachers, great teachers, well paid, highly valued, who challenge our students, high standards, free to teach, and every child who walks into every school, wherever it is, knows that he or she's loved. Yes, yes. And you know, and you know what, it'd work. It would, and you know, the, the, the key element there is the teacher getting to know the child and the child's family, the personal That's right. relationship. Students tell me that all the time, all the time. Well, you know it. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah, and, and, and that's when they uh, begin to prosper, when they know the teacher and the teacher knows them. But here's something to worry about for our state and for our country. I'm in high schools all the time. We get into these discussions. We talk about education. 
I ask the students what makes for good education, they say the teacher. I say what makes for a good teacher, they talk about different things including what you just said. Then I say, how many of you want to be public school teachers? Five percent, maybe ten percent. I say, why not? They say, money, but then you know what they even say? Disrespected. Yeah. And so we're going to need several million, two million more teachers in the country in the next 10 years, and we should be thinking about how to get the very best people in teaching. Yeah. Paul, you know, when you said that, it, it just gave me an idea, a light went off in my head. Teachers are in the best position to sell the profession. Just think, you're sitting there, 30 kids in front of you, and an advertiser wouldn't ask for anything better. To be able to touch 30 people. That's right. And sell them that this is a great profession. That's right. And But you know what? And I think you hit on something. And I, I think there's got to be a way to do it. Um, because I, it's interesting you say that, because I, I can think of one, two, two quick examples. I was in Alec, Alexandria. Right. Uh, uh, greater Minnesota right now, rural Minnesota is really, again, economy's booming. Actually, in many ways, we have two Minnesotas. Yeah. And the greater, yeah. the rural Minnesota is falling further and further behind yeah. economically. Family farmers are going under, you name it. I was in Alec, and since very few students said they want to teach, there were some teachers and I said that were, you know, there are gathering, there are a couple hundred students, and I said, can I ask you all, why are you teaching? And these teachers started talking about why they chose teaching as a profession. You could have dropped a pin. The students, I don't think, had ever heard their teachers talk Good about point. why they were teaching. Good point. This, I don't believe these students had ever that's, heard their teachers. Right. And some of these teachers were saying, because when I was in high school, I remembered a teacher yep. and he made all the difference to me and That's I thought right. to myself if in my life I could do that for a young person that'd be worth everything sure and these students were listening it was so inspiring second example Good. my youngest son Mark is at Hamlin now and to go back to get his certification and I came to teach a class of a couple of classes education classes uh -huh. with some really good professors there at Hamlin and there were two groups of students and these students were a little older. They weren't 18 or 19. They were probably anywhere from late 20s to, I'd say, mid 40s. Mm -hmm. And many of them were kind of making change. And they were wanted. And I asked them. I said, Why do you, why do you want to go into teaching? Some of them had been in advertising in different areas. You should have heard them. You'd have loved it. Yeah. Because then you get a real sure. sense for, I mean, to be able to have a relationship with a young person, to make a difference in that young person's life, right? Mm -hmm. That's, you'll never be a millionaire and teachers should have good salaries and decent working conditions. That, right. We should make sure that happens. That's right. But boy, that's worth, you do all the work with young people. Why, why, why have you ended up doing this? You're not a millionaire, let me ask you. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, again, it's- Well, maybe it's, you are a millionaire. Yeah, I wish I was. Uh, uh, not, not in coin. But I am a millionaire, not in coin. That's right. Uh, but I think, and in, 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 in my colleagues and people that I talk, uh, t teach with, uh, I, I teach at Arlington, and I'm with, with uh, two other guys, and, and um, we have a challenging group of young uh, adolescents, and um, we relate to them uh, quite a bit. I mean, we, we try to let them know. We, I mean, we don't try, we just do by revealing ourselves, revealing who we are. And then they say, well, gee, if he, they went through that. That's what we're going through. Yeah. You know, we can do that. And uh, sometimes I ask them, I said, well, wouldn't you like to have a job like this? Look at me, I come to work dressed the way I want to, and you know, I chill, and, you know, and I'm, I'm having fun with you guys. I said, wouldn't you like to have a job like this? And I, then I tell them what it, you know, what it takes. Yeah. And, and there's, there's nothing, nothing, and I think um, you can look at educators all across the country and the reason they get into it is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. It is. It's pretty similar. And, and they, want, um, they want to be able to, uh, well, replicate themselves many times yeah. to the extent that they are satisfied with who they yeah. are. 
then they w would like to replicate that. Paul, we got five minutes, man. I have a lot of respect got, for teachers that do this. Go we, ahead. We only got five minutes. Yeah. So is there anything that we forgot to cover? No, except, well, here's, here's something. Uh, since we only have five minutes left, we'll go back to athletics. You know, you know uh, uh, I was talking to a friend, Richard Medcalf, the other day, who's a really good, good labor leader in our state, and he was saying something that I agree with. He was saying that this focus on education, you get a lot of focus on elementary school. You know, the, hey, you gotta get it right here. Actually, right. you gotta get it right way before. Right. And then I told you I'm in a lot of high schools, we get a focus on high schools and standards. Mm -hmm. You know what we're not focusing on as much as the middle school? I know. And I'm gonna tell you something. This is, all of us can remember those years. Oh, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, these are trying times. Oh, yes. For young people. And I think we ought to also be talking more about the, that challenge and what goes on and the importance of the work at the middle school level. And I say that because when I was teaching at Carlton, there was three years where I coached a wrestling team, mm -hmm. the, middle, the junior high school team, right. which, was about, hmm. which was about two and a half blocks from hmm. my office. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, you talk about the song, Two Different Worlds. Yeah. I'd go from Carlton and yeah. I'd go over to that junior high school right. and I'd coach. And a lot of those kids on that team these were kids, wrestling tends to attract kids a little bit like boxing, mm -hmm. at least there at the school. Right. They attracted some kids who, yeah. kind of like I was yeah. in junior high, yeah. were pretty tough kids and, yeah. and not everything was easy for them. Physical. But, but I loved it. It was like a different world, but I loved it. And I want to tell you something else now, I'm going to brag. That team was 1-13. in 13. I remember this, see? They were 1-13 uh -huh. in 13 when I came on as coach. That was before I coached. And then right. my first year, we were 500. And the last two years, we didn't lose a match. Get out. No, we were tough. We beat Apple Valley Junior uh -huh. High School. We were uh -huh. tough. Paul, you know what? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. You got to know those kids. Oh, it was fun. You knew their parents. You knew their family. They knew you. See, I'm telling you, that's what it, that's what it yeah. takes in teaching, coaching. Um, the, the, the successful teachers and the successful coaches coaches are the ones who knew their kids and the kids knew them. Well, I think you're, I think that's, I think that's, well, I won't say it about myself, thank you for saying it, but I do think you're right about coaches in general and as I, kind of a way to bring our interview, and by the way, to an end and thanks for having me, is to, to sort of end where we began. I, I, um, I have a, I don't put athletics above other things in life and you said yourself that you know there ought to be more emphasis on the academics and a athletes that do well or, or for that matter theater, music, yeah. there's so many yeah. extracurricular activities. Right. For many kids that's why they get through school sure. and do well, so sure. there are other things they can do well. Yes. But for me, athletics really saved my life uh -huh. and I have a love affair with it for that reason and in particular the sport wrestling did. Good, and good. I'm a classic example of a kid who was heading not in the right direction. Yeah, you know I'm glad to hear you say that and I'm glad that you emphasize that because you know what happens on this show and I get teased about it all the time. We start out with sports and we go all over the place <laughs> and, and we, we end up with sports. So that's, we that, did again. That, that's legit. That we, makes us legit. We did again. Yep. Thanks Paul. I really Really do appreciate you coming on, Thanks and uh, for me. we've got to do this again. Okay. And uh, and uh, I wish you had all day uh, a after we go off camera so I, we could have uh, trade North Carolina stories. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody for being with us again this week. Uh, and you know that um, you can watch this show at one o'clock each and every day. As it is slippery outside, I want you to traverse the elements very carefully because the life you save may be your own. <laughs>